Hello everyone and welcome to the Greek God Challenge for BTD6. This challenge was inspired by a post I saw on the BTD6 subreddit um, where the OP kind of showed that we basically have the three main gods within BTD6, which of course being um, Zeus who represents Superstorm, uh, Poseidon who of course represents Popsidon, and then uh, Prince of Darkness represents Hades. I wanted to expand that a little bit further because I do think we have a little bit more of the kind of main 12 um, Greek gods here, so I'll go over those briefly. A choice of hero is Quincy because I feel like Wolfpack Quincy represents Artemis almost perfectly, um, just minus the fact that Quincy's a guy. Prince of Darkness of course represents Hades who is the god of kind of the underworld and death. Permanent Brew I feel like represents Dionysus who is the kind of god of wine, uh, mainly just because we don't really know what the brew contains. Of course, Superstorm represent, represents Zeus. Uh, Spear of the Forest represents Demeter, who is the goddess of agriculture. And then Avatar Wrath represents Ares, who is the god of war. And then of course, uh, Pop Sidon represents Poseidon. And then Final Harmonic, I chose to represent Apollo, who is the god of music. And so yeah, that is all the kind of towers I can think of that represents gods. And the map I chose was Adora's Temple because it's only the only map I feel like that kind of is kind of god-esque. Now of course there are other towers I feel like could represent kind of other gods. I only chose the kind of main 12 since that's what people are most familiar with. And as well as the fact that I um, would probably include too many more towers if I went and looked for every single Greek god there is. I was debating whether or not I should allow um, Engineer as to kind of represent Hephaestus, who is kind of the god of like blacksmithing and stuff. But um, I decided against it because I feel like I'd be stretching it too much. Since Engineer doesn't really do any sort of blacksmithing, he just kind of makes stuff. And then I guess blacksmithing is making stuff, but it's not really the same. Anyways, that out of the way, I think we're just going to go for a standard Quincy Alchemist early game. And then see if I can kind of save up for Spirit of the Forest as soon as I can. Uh, just because we can make enough money here. Um, I do kind of want to go for Avatar Wrath and uh, Pop Sidon for late game. Um, but of course those two towers are pretty expensive. Over $100,000 combining the two. And so we're going to need a lot of money to afford those. And so our only money making option is going to be Spirit of the Forest. Now of course in terms of tower selection it's not really all that bad. We do actually have some decent stuff here. Um, Superstorm, of course, is kind of pretty cracked overall. Ball Lightning is really good ceramic control. And then Spear of the Forest is also pretty decent against ceramics as well. And then our molar damage is also pretty solid because we do have Avatar Wrath and Pop Sidon. Both of those towers are pretty good against Mob class balloons, so I figured why not? Uh, the only issue is going to be saving up for all those towers, so I think as soon as I get Fast to Throne, because I think this is probably where I'm going to put Permbrood. As I think this is where I'll just kind of keep all of my kind of main defenses right here. Now Druid's not going to be as good as it kind of was before in the early game. Just due to the fact that it did get unnerfed a little bit. I mean I could, but I think I want to put it in a way to where it won't absorb an alk buff. So I'll kind of put it like down here. It's main attack isn't going to be what we want here. So it's kind of fine if it's in a bad spot. But unfortunately kind of Druid of the jungle did get nerfed in this most recent update. So it's been unfortunate. Uh, thankfully, Heart of Thunder um, can kind of come in clutch here. Alright, 49 is a bit tough, so I'm actually going to use Quincy's ability and kind of hope that it comes back in time for the Moab on 50. I mean, if not, we do have Quincy level 10, which would help out immensely. It seems I'm going to have to rely on it, so hopefully we can beat this first Moab just fine. And I completely forgot that uh, arrows kind of... Those are balloons are first on the track, but it seems that we didn't even need it. So here comes the second mob here, which I think will go up here. No. Alright, use Quincy's arrows, and then easy. Uh, this round's kind of brutal. Camo Cerams. I think I might have to kind of restart this round. Since I don't have arrows or anything else, if Quincy can hold off for level 10 to come back up, I think we might be fine. I'm okay with leaking a little bit. Okay, use it now. Because, I mean, this guy does regenerate lives, so if we lose some, it doesn't really matter. Okay, perfect. And then we're roughly 5,000 away from Spear of the Forest. As soon as we get this, um, I probably won't have to worry about anything until the 80s. And so I'll kind of plan out what I want to go for next. We're almost there, although if I can't get it before 55, I might have to maybe sell to get it. Because we're leaking a little bit, that's fine. I think we're dead to, yeah, we're dead to that mob. 
No, never mind. Although we did leak a lot, but I think we're dead to this one. Yeah. And we were very close to the Force 2, so I could sell this guy. So when I get like pretty close, maybe it's like 3k, I'll sell this guy. And then just get this. And that guarantees we beat this round pretty easily. And so I'll get it back. Um, I might get him a little bit lower. I don't know if I want to put Pop Sidon in the water. Because, I mean, that range is kind of pitiful. Even though he gets bigger range in the water, I feel like getting him on a higher platform might honestly be better. And I think I'll still get Alchemist kind of close by Quincy. Since uh, Quincy is going to benefit from Alchemist buff the most. By the way, I think I'm going to get Permabrew next. Just because Quincy does benefit greatly from Alchemist buff, and I think if we can get Permabrew, I think that alone would uh, easily beat the rest of the game, as well as provide decent support for um, when I eventually get all the other towers. Alright, Permabrew now. Unfortunately, the small range is going to be incredibly annoying. Nijikui did kind of nerf that this update. Bit unfortunate, but oh well, I guess we'll just have to make do. I'm kind of thinking about it now. If I would to have done it, I might have put... Um, Alchemist right where this kind of captive bar was, kind of right here next to Spear of the Forest. And so just way it has a little bit better range. So let's see, let me do a kind of experiment. If I get Druid here, and then if I get range, it kind of just barely clips this bottom part here. How far down can I put it to still be an Alk range? Not very far. I think we'll just have to roll with that placement. Anyways, I'm going to get like Prince of Darkness. I think here is fine. Actually, no, maybe like down here just for the camo. So yeah, so I'll get Prince of Darkness kind of right here. Just for the camo. Um, the damage isn't really needed, but um, it's just for the D camo purposes. And I guess it could also help a little bit with kind of clean up. Alright, so here comes 90. Hopefully, on um, DT's no issue. Yep, perfectly fine. So we're pretty close to kind of Avatar Wrath. Um, definitely be able to get this up before round 100, so that basically means round 100 is free. And then I think after this I want to go for kind of Pop Sidon. Alright, so we got all five stacks. We actually got all five stacks on this guy, so it's pretty impressive. Uh, if I get another Druid down, I can get it in range of five stacks, but I can't get it in range of Permabrew. It's sad. I can maybe get it, like, potentially down here, maybe? And of course, we're going to go for kind of Bottom Path, because the Camel Detection and I think Echo Sense Network is probably going to be something I need here for the range. So it seems that early free play rounds are no issue at all. Um, I think well, round 111, which I think has a ton of fortified CMGs, that might be a bit of an issue. Uh, mainly just because of Pierce, but I think at the rate we're making money, I think we'll be able to afford to pop Sidon by then. Then after that, I think I want to go for Final Harmonic, and then I'll go for Superstorm. I think Superstorm's probably going to be the last uh, tier 5 I go for. I just pop Sidon now, and thankfully we get the absolute massive range increase. So we now we have some more abilities to juggle. And then Final Harmonic. I would like to get it in range of this. Yeah, I think here is fine. I'm not really sure would, if Avatar Wrath really needs increased pierce. That is something I do need to keep in mind. Kind of considering changing my placement now, which I think I will do. Although I can't really change it in a good place to where it can kind of fit stuff here. There's too much stuff in the way. I sell this guy and then get him here. And so this way, Avatar Wrath will get the increase in Pierce. Um, and then I can easily get Druid back. Alright, so 116 has a fair amount of fortified ZMGs. We're actually shredding pretty nicely. Definitely don't expect to go this far. Um, I think the next tower, of course, I want to get is going to be Superstorm. Um, I'm just going to get it right here. Um, 117, wrong cross path. 117 has a lot of DTs, but I think we should be fine against those. As long as Prince Darkness and Harmonic can decamo everything. Alright, so BADs on 119 shouldn't be too bad. Pop that one pretty easily. Oh, this one you might here might be a bit of an issue. I'm gonna use Quincy's ability just to do more damage for the bads. So that one's not popped. I think we should be fine though. Although maybe not because it's gonna go up this path here. No, never mind. Quincy's arrows again, and then yeah, once final harmonic kind of scoops everything up, we should be pretty solid. 
I think at the pace we're going, we're definitely going to be able to afford Superstorm here. I really did not expect to, but once we kind of afford this, we're basically immune to like any round that doesn't have BADs. And it's based on kind of how we're doing so far. I don't really need to use kind of any abilities, just kind of using uh, Spear of the Forest just to make a little bit extra cash. As you can see, we're shredding these rounds fairly easily. Alright, Superstorm has been afforded, and so we can basically kind of coast, because there's nothing else I can really buy. we got all the kind of gods here. Um, unfortunately, Superstorm's kind of in a bad spot that it's going to be stalling rounds for forever, so I might actually want to sell it and then relocate it, because these ZMGs are going to get blown back forever. Yes, yeah, so never mind. I'm actually just going to sell this so we're not sitting here for forever. I'm not really sure where else I'd want to put Superstorm. Maybe like right here? I guess that's fine. But I just don't really want it in a spot where it's going to infestall ZMGs. Anyways, balloons are actually starting to push a little bit. I'm actually going to use abilities here. Although we did get Superstorm back, so I think we should be fine now. So hopefully this is a little bit better of a spot, so it's not going to start infinite stalling everything. Because as long as towers can hopefully do damage um, while Superstorm's kind of pushing stuff back, that's fine. But if I kind of left it to where Superstorm was, it's going to kind of start stalling rounds for a really long time. Also, something I kind of learned, um, kind of reading the BT6 wiki that I actually didn't realize when I did my kind of pop sign showcase. Um, but here's our Blackboard Luminous Cove video, is that a middle path actually does gain extra frozen damage, but you don't actually, wouldn't actually know that because it doesn't actually say that it gives extra frozen damage. Um, so it's kind of weird that NGQ kind of hid that um, kind of little, I wouldn't say statistic, but kind of mechanic. Um, do we beat the bads for 140? Um, it seems that we will be able to, maybe just kind of barely though. As long as you can pop it in range of Superstorm, we're kind of fine. Although it's not going to be in range of Superstorm, so... If Final Harmonic can kind of clean everything up, that'd be nice. Um... Is it really not going to pop? Wow. Just tanked a whole fortified bat. Not really anything I can really change here. Um, I can maybe use Pop Silent's ability in combination with Quincy's. Although I don't know if that alone would be able to do enough damage. I think we do just straight up die to 140. Yeah, if the map was just a little bit longer, we definitely would be able to, but I think, yeah, it's a GG. We don't even pop the bad layer here. So, of course, 140 proves to be a really difficult round. Kind of surprised there, because I thought we would have gotten pretty far. Um, so, yeah, that was the kind of Greek God Challenge in um, BTD6. Again, like I said earlier, more gods that you could add if you really wanted to stretch um, kind of definitions and whatnot. I really only wanted to do kind of the main 12 since that's what most people are somewhat familiar with. And I didn't really want to stretch it too much beyond that one. So if you enjoyed the video or if you have any more kind of challenge ideas, be sure to leave them down in the comments below or join Discord. Link is in the description. I'll see you all in the next video and have a nice day.